Jillian Harrell, Fencing Harpist. Jillian, what's the significance of uh, your Instagram handle, Fencing Harpist? It's um, basically, when I first started Instagram, I wasn't into photography, I was just starting fencing, but I'd been playing harp for a very long time, since I was three years old, so I wanted to kind of combine my two hobbies into one, and so that's what started this whole thing that I've been involved with uh, for the last three years. Wow, now three years old, you're, you're now how old? 15. So, <laughs> 15. How does one discover playing the harp at the age of three? I was at a hospital opening ceremony and there was this woman there playing the harp and it was so beautiful. She played Beauty and the Beast and I danced along to it and I told my dad, I want a harp for Christmas. So he got me a really small one but I've just kind of graduated uh, to a concert brand harp and it's been my love for as long as I can remember. So. Nice, your, your first love before, before fencing. Before fencing. <laughs> now fencing is my second love and I kind of have to put them at an even playing field. And, and uh, when did you f discover fencing? I discovered fencing when I was 12 and um, I wasn't really involved in many sports. I just did swimming for a bit, and, but it wasn't really my thing because I wanted to do something more individual that wasn't just about how fast you are or how strong you are, but it involved uh, many, many factors like fencing. Uh, you can be very small and not as strong as someone else but you can still overcome them through uh, mental strength or it's all psychological and there are just so many things involved with fencing. It, it, it just made me love it even more. So fencing, or excuse me, uh, playing the harp, discovering at three versus 12, mm -hmm. definitely has a leg up on, on fencing. Yes. You mentioned balancing time and in your focus. How do you prioritize between the two? Well, I come home from school and I practice the harp. Sometimes I don't, I'm not able to because I have to go straight to fencing practice. But I still find time after practice. I'm all sweaty, but I still have to sit down and play the harp. Or my teacher comes over um, for harp and I'm in my fencing workout clothes, playing the harp in fencing shoes. Or sometimes I have to choose which tournaments I want to go to over which recitals I want to go to. And just figure, uh, prioritize one thing over another. I think at this point I'm more interested in fencing, um, but harp, I still find time to do harp and but maybe not practice as much as others in the instrument do. So for, for anyone with any reference to playing a musical instrument, it's usually the guitar, mm -hmm. a piano, you know, maybe a trumpet or something. Mm -hmm. How, how about playing the harp? What are some of the, the primary challenges that, that you encounter or your favorite aspects about playing the harp? I think my favorite aspect of the harp is kind of like my favorite aspect of fencing. It's because no one else really does it and it's also kind of a renaissance thing or something of the past. And um, But I love things that have become modernized, like fencing. It's it's an old sport, but we've made it electronic and um, electric fencing. But I also play the electric harp and just modernizing the harp. And I love it because it's, um, it's just, you can play one note and it sounds beautiful. Unlike uh, a trumpet, which you have to learn over time, or a violin, which sounds ugly until you learn it. But the harp will always be beautiful. It's just about taking that talent that you have for it to make it even more beautiful. And it's a lot of fun to try to master and a lot of people tell me isn't it really challenging to learn the harp but I just tell them that it's just like a sideways piano or no a right, a right side up piano <laughs> that you don't have to play keys on you pluck strings so and, and you talked about that graduation or progression through your time playing the harp mm -hmm. how, how large is your harp it's taller than I am but I'm pretty tall so it's six feet tall. It's about as tall as my dad, maybe six two. So do, do you stand while playing it? Sit? Can you I, do whatever? I sit, um, but the electric harp is smaller and um, it can be strapped to your body. And um, if you want to look up the electric harp on YouTube, it's really interesting. You have like a harness that goes with it and you can play it while standing and you can play rock and roll pieces. You can play Metallica on it. You can play anything. But I also love um, playing classical music on my just normal larger harp. And speaking to the point of the range, Metallica to classical yeah. music, um, you know, what are the outlets you have as a harp musician? 
do you have a band? Do you have a, a group of fellow harpists I, that you jam yeah. out? I have. I used to be in a harp ensemble, and so it was a group of 14 other harpists, and we'd get together at coffee shops, and we'd all play one song, but each person would have a different part, and it was amazing to be a part of a group like that. But I also like to play as a solo instrument, so I play sometimes with the orchestra at school, or I play just at recitals and whatnot, but you have to know your audience and who you're playing for when you choose a song. You're not going to want to play a Metallica song at an old um, retirement home. <laughs> you don't want to play classical music for a school talent show because everyone will just be bored. So so what's your favorite type of music to play I, on the heart? I actually, I think I like uh, classical music, but not classical music that everyone is familiar with, so it's more of um, this one composer named Noderman, and he actually wrote music for Napoleon. And it's one of the first harp pieces that was really made specifically for harp. And I just love playing um, his pieces because of um, the repetition and the ways that he has chord progressions. And it's so fun to play, and you can get a lot of emotions into it. It's, I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as like, you know, you talk about the your your reasons for mm -hmm. playing harp or for fencing. What are some of the primary challenges that you experience actually playing the harp? Like guitarists have the the guitar fingers. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you encounter that as well? I get um, harp fingers too. Um, sometimes you get calluses and whatnot. But I think another challenge with harp and fencing is confidence. Even though um, I've always been a confident person, it's very hard to go up in front of many people and play the song just as you would when you are alone. Same thing with fencing. When you go on the strip, you have to have respect for the person in front of you while also respecting yourself, kind of like respecting the instrument, but also respecting yourself as a player and respecting everyone else around you who's watching. And I think that both um, sports and the instrument are very performance based. When you're fencing, um, you need to show the referee um, what you're capable of and you need to be very visual. And it's the same thing with harp. You have to be able to show the audience what you're capable of uh, through your body movements and even your facial expressions. Um, in fencing, I love to scream and show kind of that the facial expressions and how it feels to be fencing. So uh, harp is a very, uh, another expressive outlet for me to. Uh, show my different emotions and the same as in a fencing bout. You talk about outlets. In addition to fencing and, and playing the harp, you still have time to really showcase a lot of those, those um, talents, if you will, through your photography. Yeah. Do, you, do you also have kind of a platform that you use to show off and feature your, fence, uh, your, your harp talents? I have tried to make a CD um, before. I'm still working on a CD to give to family members at Christmas or whoever wants one. Um, recording studio times and things like that. Um, I've posted a few videos on YouTube of me playing harp, but I'm still kind of social media wise um, showing the harp. I haven't been working on as much as I have through photography and things like that, but I um, just like performing to live audiences. And you talk about social media, clicking on the fencing hashtag, you might find of a, a, an array of different yeah. posts from actual fencing, like chain link fencing or wooden fencing to the sport. <laughs> what might uh, consumers of social media find when clicking on a harp hashtag or what are, what are popular harp related hashtags? Um, I think there are different harp hashtags like harp strings and wings or different things like that where other harpists post videos of them playing popular songs like um, the theme song to the office or playing something along I've seen a guy play the harp and also play the guitar at the same time or people that sing along with it there's Celtic harp there's pedal harp there are many different kinds of harps same thing with fencing there's epee fencing foil fencing saber fencing harp you have pedal fence or not fencing pedal harp, lever harp, and Celtic harp, and it all just comes together and everyone has discussions about it, which one's the best, which one sounds better, it's just, you're never going to 
come to the conclusion of that argument like you will in fencing. Well, obviously your conclusion with fencing or your stance would be Sabre. Sabre, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jillian. Well, thank you so much for your time and uh, happy, happy practicing. Thank you.